Let's have a look at creating a design scheme from scratch in AutoCAD Civil 3D 2010. What I have in front of me is a standard map plan um, of Randallstown direction in County Antrim. And I'm going to have a proposed new design scheme that's going to accommodate some new houses in here. And I'm going to use Civil 3D for this. First task I want to do is bring in a surface. So my surface data has come from standard ordnance survey, um, 5 meter grid data. Um, because Civil 3D is object led, I can actually pick the style of surface I want to use. I'm going to say contours 1 and 5 meters. But the data I have covers an extensive area, um, actually 10 times the size of the area I'm looking at. I need to be smart about this, so I'm going to use a data clip before the data actually comes in. So I'm going to data clip it to the rectangle. This simply means when I add in the XYZ file from Ordnance Survey in, it'll only, only the data for that actual boundary will come in. So it will triangulate the surface, automatically create the contours. Again, we can do lots of smart things in Civil 3D. If it's a huge area or a lot of data, we can sample it every second point or maybe every fifth point. You can see there's my surface in place. That is part um, of an object-oriented surface, so it means I can go in and change the style. So say if I want to show my triangulations in there, if I want to take it back to one of five meters, maybe I'll just want to take it down to my border only, so I won't actually get to see my surface. Um, only the border, but it still is there, part of my model. Um, we can label this as well, so if I looked at my annotation I could add in some quick labels to the surface, such as contour ranges. As I select my contour line and actually drag it, it's going to automatically update in the background. We can also add some surface information in, in the form of uh, spot levels. So I could do a couple of spot levels at various points to give me a check on my existing surface. Although when we're actually in the screen it will tell us the actual elevation uh, on the crosshairs. A nice little tool I like is the water drop or runoff. Um, this lets you know if you had water in the surface where it would actually run off to. Um, again this is very good for corridor modelling. It's also very good if you need to determine where the um, low point is where the water is going to go to. But let's have a look at our principal design. So. Firstly, we're going to create our horizontal geometry. I'm going to call this Design Road A. And as part of my design, I can specify design criteria. Now, it's available out of the box for using the UK and Ireland uh, kits. Uh, you can also create your own design criteria in here. I'm going to comply with TD93A standards. And I'm going to say the design speed of the road is 85 kilometers per hour. But again, I could maybe drop that. I'm going to say, let's make this 50. Um, we've got lots of various creation tools we can create in uh, the horizontal geometry with. I'm just going to say straight to straight with curves. I'm going to simply place my chain each starting from here. Working my way across this where my road scheme is going to start for the houses. And then ending up over here. And you'll see I've got my curve in. Now again we can change this geometry information. We can change the um, position stretch the curve out. Uh, we can change any of the geometry as well. So again you can see that can actually change and adapt. Now as the problem is, as I'm shortening this curve here, you can see my defect warning. It's actually indicating that I don't meet my minimum criteria. So if I looked at the alignment geometry, and if I had a look at this on the actual geometry table, you'll see that the radius is 137 meters, where it should be 360 to meet my minimum design speed. Criteria, so I've got change up to 360 and my geometry now complies. So I've got my horizontal in, I've got my existing surface, let's create a profile based on this. I'm going to create a surface profile based on design road A and I'm going to draw this in the profile view like so. This is part of a dynamic model again um, because we've got AutoCAD objects we can simply move. Um, this simply means that if I change any of my geometry. So if I move the position of my geometry, you'll see that the actual profile will update. So I've always ensure that I'm getting the correct information as I change my design process or my design criteria in there. Let's look at the vertical curve as part of this new scheme. So we'll go to our profile view. Profile creation tools will pick our existing profile and we'll call this vertical curve. 
again we can use rule based design criteria that we can specify from the standard library and again of course we can actually change we can change various um, values in there such as minimum k values um, I'm going to go um, draw a curved geometry here use my existing tools I could use a transparent tool tools that's actually available from the library I'm going to tie into my endpoint again I can quit out my geometry we can change any of the data in here we can change the position again that's going to give me a more fill area um, but it's going to smooth out that curve again I can change my tangent points as well we can change all this geometry is very easily to maneuver and update so our horizontals in, the vertical geometry is in, we need the cross section that actually builds our road this is where an assembly comes in, we simply create an assembly give the assembly a position on the screen. Now to get started with assemblies we would have a look at our tool palettes. Um, there's lots of standard assemblies that you can actually use from the libraries that you can pull in. I simply have my filter out here so say if I look at all the palettes you've got a wide variety of assemblies. Again these could be retaining walls and um, these could be row corridor models, this could be real design etc in here, it could be trench information. But I'm going to keep this very very simple. I'm going to use a couple that I have from the library. Um, some of my own personal favourite ones in here I'm just going to use my pentagon solutions so I'm going to use standard carriage ride geometry again I can change the cross fall as well so I can make that minus 2.5% um, we can change our widths in here as well so we could say we'll make this lane width 3.65 and select our start point again we can swap this to our left and then what we can add in is the likes of our curve. So I can say add in our basic curve and channel, starting with the left. And for assembly or sub assemblies, we can actually create our own uh, sub assemblies as well, very very easily. If you didn't want to use some of the components from the library, I'm going to add in my daylight, or commonly known as cut and fill. Again, with all very adaptive parameters that can be cha changed as part of the design process. So I've got my main carriage by makeup there. So I've got the three components that I need for my road. I've got the horizontal, I've got my vertical, and I've got my cross section for the actual road. Okay, let's have a look at the creating this design. So we're going to create a corridor based on design road A using the vertical geometry that we've created based on our sub-assembly. Our target is the Ordnance Survey NI data that we've actually brought in on a road corridor model we built. Again, that's just the road corridor model, so um, there's no surface information related to it. See, it's just a simple corridor at this stage. So what we can actually do is we can select a road corridor, go into our properties, and through this we can add in a surface based on the top or crown, but make sure it actually obeys to the daylight. So it means it's going to cut to the actual daylight um, or the cut and fill. Again, the surface properties, because it's part of the model, we can actually change this. I can say make this contours 0.1 and 0.5. I have my road corridor surface created. So if I have a look at this in the object viewer, we get to see my road corridor surface. So the information to this is all going back to the tool space in here. Um, again, we can have a look at this, the likes of our corridors. We can go in and change the information properties in here. Um, I'm going to call this design road A. Um, and it's important for me in this corridor that I wanted to rebuild automatic. Sometimes you'll have rebuild automatic on or off, depends on the size of the scheme. It simply means as I'm changing geometry um, in here, so if I actually need to change my design geometry, so if I move the position of this alignment, my corridor model will be adaptive enough to rebuild. So it is truly linking into the dynamic model. If I need to get my cross sections uh, through this corridor model, um, I would have a look at my sample lines. If I go to my sample lines, I can pick my alignment. And I'm going to do this by a range of changes. Now I could pick individual sample lines or section lines on the screen, but I'm going to keep it by a range. I decide my um, Swath pass for the left and right, 30 meters is quite fine, and I'm happy enough to keep this at 50 meter um, change increments. If I hit OK, my actual section lines or sample lines will go in. 
Again, all these can be changed. Um, they can ch be changed before or after the actual section lines go in. I can stretch areas of concern out, say if I was concerned here, I might break this out into a junction again later on. So to create these sample views, we go to our section views, create multiple section views. Simply create them and give the position. I will get all our section views tying into our existing surface. Again, this is part of the dynamic model as you've seen earlier on in the presentation. So um, I change any of the design or change the alignment, it's all automatically going to update in the background. I'm at an early stage of my project, say I want to um, run a quick analysis uh, between the two surfaces in here. We can go to analyze and um, we can compute the materials for this. So I could say, well, based on my current alignment, um, I want a difference between my existing ground and my actual proposed in here um, and comparing the two surfaces. Um, this allows us to get a total volume report based on this. Um, so if I look at it again, we can decide whether our total volume report is going to be um, dynamic or static. And it will give me a net fill or the net cut related to that. Again, all this is style orientated, so um, we can change this to actually suit and uh, tie into our existing style. So say if we were looking at the fill information that we might want to show, we can take this off in the background. As part of this design, we may want to look at the um, drainage for this. So if I go to home, um, I could look at my create design object for a pipe network. So we could look at our pipe network creation tools in here. We could call this storm. Um, we can pick the structure um, part list actually as default. And again, we can edit the actual raw catalog library in here as well. I'm going to say storm water. The surface is the existing corridor based on the design road A. And um, we're going to do data with connected pipes or we can do cover in there. Um, we can specify um, whether we want the pipe length and slope for the label style. I'm going to say give me the name, size and 2D length. Um, we will pick our actual structure to use and what pipe we're going to start with and um, obviously our slope direction. So I'm going to start by putting in some various manhole positions. Again, is this part of my initial design? But because I'll be constantly changing this, and this is fine, this is where it will tie in with, as part of the dynamic model. So if we select any one of the elements of the pipe or the structures, if I move it, they'll all tie in. So actually change in position, whether I'm adding gullies in here, and whether it's drainage, runoff, etc. in here. But I'll need to get this in my profile view. So, I mean, say if I needed all the manholes in here, um, I could use my quick tools like select similar. Um, I've got my contextual letter up here and I could say draw the parts in the profile. So I'll get to see my manholes in the profile. Um, again, if I wanted to see the actual sewers um, or the storm pipes in the manhole, in the profile, um, we could actually add those in very, very quickly. And I can see parts of my design issues in here. Maybe this uh, manhole is too deep. It's going to be about four meters to meet this. We're going to have to actually change this. Um, again, we can actually change the, the various options in here um, and criteria as well, um, tying in, in with our dynamic model. And because we're using Civil 3D, um, which is based on AutoCAD and based on AutoCAD map, we may have some mapping information we might want to bring into the scheme. So I may want to attach the likes of the aerial photograph in the background. So again, I can actually go in, select up my aerial photograph, attach it to the map. It's added in the background. Again, we can select this, uh, change the display order, and um, send it to the back. So we've got design criteria on top of our aerial photograph, on top of our mapping data in there. Um, again, we can actually take this off using our task pane if we don't need to see it. Any other data that we don't need to see, um, we can hide very quickly using use uh, isolated hide, ob hide objects in here and um, get any data we don't want to see. Because we have geospatial data that might, might tie into design, um, so there'll be some other information we'll, we'll want to drag and drop. And I'm going to drag and drop this um, the postcode areas in from this boundary. This again, it's going to bring them in. You'll see the postcode areas are actually attributed uh, now to the houses. Um, Again, if I have a look at this in the data table, I can look at my t table and you can see all the information related to that. So that might be important to me if I'm doing notifications to homeowners around here. Um, what also is important to me is say the likes of the water mains. Um, so I need to know what water mains are actually running in this area. 
again I can have a look at this uh, and the data properties in here and see all the information I can see the condition of the domain feature idea when it was last expected because I need this to tie into my existing water information the other thing uh, is that being concerned with visibility space and adding new developments and etc and with um, certainly from a planning perspective is traffic accidents for the road so I might want to bring in my traffic accidents um, and have a look at them so you can see there's quite a few traffic accidents around here but not only that we've got some traffic accidents that are fatal um, again we can go and inspect this we can have a look in the table and see um, how many accidents and uh, what the actual net result was in here and this might force me to change my actual uh, design process and again this allows me um, with all this information with the geospatial data and with the civil design to make much informed decision making um, as part of Civil 3D.